Hi! The beautiful animated illustration in PowerPoint you will learn to create today looks like this. Ho oh, ho, isn't this beautiful? Let me show that again. First, you see this background. Then, on a click, the various elements animate quite nicely. And we have some beautiful birds flying, we have the balloon flying. Everything looks as if it is a scene from a movie. We created this entirely inside PowerPoint. While I was watching one of the Adobe After Effects tutorial by Avinish Parker, I found this beautiful animation created by him. And this looks really nice and I thought, why can't we create something as beautiful as this inside PowerPoint and that is the reason why I created this. Of course, you can use the technique I'm about to show you to create any type of illustration. The reason why I created this video is to show you that it is possible for you to create some really interesting effects even inside PowerPoint and you don't have to use some complex software like Adobe After Effects. So before we learn how to create that, I am Ram Gopal from PresentationProcess.com, the creator of comprehensive all-in-one PowerPoint bundle, a collection of more than 4,500 premium PowerPoint templates that make your presentations beautiful and engaging. The link is in the description box below. Here I am on a new slide. The first thing I'm going to do is to create a background scene that looks beautiful for this scenario. So I'm going to right click, go to format background and I go to gradient fill. I can go to preset gradient and choose one of the preset gradients. This looks pretty beautiful. So we have dark green here and then light green here. We can always change the color. I can go here to the top because we need this to be in blue color. So I'm going to choose this blue color. And if you want this to have a yellow tinge, you can do that as well. Let us go to this and maybe you can use this kind of a yellow tinge. And if you think that this is way too bright, you can reduce the transparency a little bit. Everything is completely up to you. So we have got a nice looking background. So job one is done. The next step is to create some windmills here that make the scenery come to life. So let us go to a new slide and I'm going to insert windmills which are taken from pixabay.com. I searched for windmill and I got this because I was too bored to create these elements right from scratch. So I just thought I will pick up something that is readily available and I got this as an SVG image. Now PowerPoint 365 allows you to work directly with vector graphic which is SVG format. If you don't have this option then you can always take this format convert it into EMF format, ungroup it twice and use it in your PowerPoint slides. To convert SVG into EMF, you can use services like cloudconvert.com. So I'm going to assume that we have the option to work with SVG directly inside PowerPoint. I've already downloaded the image of the windmill. So I'm going to copy this and then go to a new slide and I'm going to paste it. Let us resize this substantially because we need to have this on this scenario. I'm going to right click and go to convert to shape and once again I'm going to right click and go to group ungroup so we have every element totally broken down into individual pieces. I'm going to have this pole in white color and I'm going to have the blade somewhere in the dark gray color and we are going to have these two elements grouped together. So now we have the windmill pretty much in place and I'm also going to add some kind of a shadow so let us use a simple ellipse and then use a darker gray color without outline and send this to back. So this will be the shadow for this windmill. Now we have this cute little windmill that can go directly into our scene. Before that, I want to have some animation happening. The first thing I want to do is to spin this and let us see what happens when I try to apply a spin animation. So let us go to animations and go to spin animation. You can see that this is moving all over the place and this is not how the windmills work. So we need to fix this issue right now. So I'm going to select this and delete it. The way we are going to solve this issue is let us go to home, go to shapes and then pick up this oval tool. Hold the shift button down and draw a circle which is larger than the size of the blade. I'm going to right click and send this to back. Of course, we don't really want this pole sticking in the front. So I'm going to send that to back. So we have the circle. We have this blade and we have the center point. All three are available. I'm going to ensure that this circle is right in the center. So I'm going to move this so the center point of the circle exactly matches the center point of the circle. So let us select all of these elements and press Ctrl G to group it. Now, when I go to animations and when I apply spin animation, you can see that things are spinning pretty beautifully without it going all wobbly. Such a simple workaround, isn't it? 
Now we don't want this disk to be seen so I'm going to select this circle, go to home, first shape outline, no outline, then right click, go to format shape and then add a transparency of 100%. You cannot say shape fill, no fill then you will not have the same effect. You need to go to transparency and increase the transparency to 100%. That is the only time when this whole thing works. Let us uh, send this thing to back. So now when I go to slideshow, this is how the windmill works. Pretty beautiful. Now we need to introduce this into the scene with a bit of a pop. So how do we do that? Let us select all of these elements, go to animations, add animation this is very important you already have a spin animation for this blade remember so we cannot go to any of these animations because that will replace the earlier animation so let us go to add animation and introduce this with a float in animation not this slowly we can use 0.25 seconds because we don't have all the time in the world go to animation pane and we are going to have this happen with previous and then once it enters the scene then we are also going to select all of these and have that uh, beautiful bouncy effect. We are going to add another animation to this called grow shrink animation. And that is the grow shrink. Let us go to effect options and say this needs to happen for 110%. So I entered 110% and hit enter. So the percentage is accepted. I'm going to say auto reverse and say OK. And we are going to change the timing to 0.25 seconds. So this happens with previous. And only after that we are going to have the spin animation. So we are going to say this happens after previous. Okay. So you can see that these are the various animations. We have selected all these elements. Two things are going to happen. One is it floats in for 0.25 seconds. And while it floats in, it is also going to grow to 110% and go back to 100%. And that is what you see here and it will start spinning. So when you go to slideshow, you can see that this enters the scene and then it has beautifully uh, started working nicely. So I'm going to press Ctrl C to copy it and I'm going to introduce this into the scene. Maybe for good order sake, we are going to make a duplicate of this and place this right next to the previous one. And uh, I'm going to move this slightly to one side, slightly behind. So the scenario looks quite nice. So we have got two elements introduced. Nice. The next thing I'm going to do is to add a couple of fir trees or pine trees to make this scene look a little more interesting. So let us go to pixabay.com as always and download pine trees. You can search for pine trees and search for vectors and you can download a vector SVG image. I've already done the work and uh, it is available here. I'm going to copy this and then go back to my slide and I'm going to paste this. And of course, this is a SVG image. I can go to right click, convert to shape and I can place this somewhere over here. And to make it look beautiful, I'm going to add a shadow. So let us use the perspective and the shadow I'm going to use is perspective lower left. So that looks pretty neat. And maybe I can make a copy of this by pressing Ctrl D and keep this to another side and give this a little more darker color to add a bit of variety. So we have got three of these pine trees also adding to the scenario and we are going to have them also introduced into the scene. So let us pick up one of these elements. So this is the element that we had introduced into the scene with our float in and grow shrink animation. So let me go to animations, double click on the animation painter and then click on this, this and this. So you can see that we have got these elements also introduced with the same kind of a pop. Beautiful, isn't it? Now, when I go to slideshow, you can see that this is how the scene is coming in. There are some issues that I can see here. First of all, let us see what is happening with these elements. Are these elements all happening together? So we need to have with previous and we can have all these happen with a little bit of delay compared to the previous one. So 0.25 seconds is the delay. And let us see if this is, yeah, now this is looking pretty beautiful. So we have fixed this issue. Now I see that this is only spinning once. So we need to fix that issue. So what do we do? We select this and this is the spin animation. So this we go to effect options and say timing. And this needs to rotate until end of slide and they say, okay. And we are going to do the same thing for this one as well. So this is the spin animation. Now when I go to slideshow, you can see that everything is pretty beautifully animated so far. Now to set up the scene, I'm going to build a background in the back. 
So I can use a semicircle to build some kind of a structure which mimics hills. So how do we draw a semicircle? It's fairly simple. I can use this one which is partial circle and let us hold the shift button and draw the partial circle. Move this over here. Yeah, that looks like a perfect semicircle. And then we can always flip it vertically. So we have got this in place and let me increase the size. So this is beautiful shape outline, no outline. And I'm going to give this a little dark green color. And uh, maybe I can make another copy of this by pressing Ctrl D and then make it slightly smaller and send this back. And then maybe I can give this a lighter green color. Yeah, that looks good. And maybe another copy of this and move this somewhere over here and send that to back and we can give this maybe this kind of a teal color and make another copy by pressing ctrl d and then i can reduce the size a little bit more and i can place this underneath that maybe a little bit even smaller and maybe make make it a little more light and then reduce the size like so yeah that is beautiful now we can send all these elements back so that is our background. Yeah, that looks beautiful. Now we need to have these background elements also pop just the way that we had the other ones popped. Now we have this circle which is uh, behind this, these trees. So I'm going to move these trees slightly away so it is much easier for me to work with them. I'm going to send this to back. So this looks like a pretty neat scenery. Now the last element that we animated is this green colored pine tree. So I'm going to use the same animation, double click on the animation painter and then I'm going to click on this. So this gets introduced with the same kind of a pop and then this one and then we have this one and then we have this one. Yeah, that is beautiful. So all these are getting into the scene with a nice pop. Let me hit escape and then you can see all these are partial circles. So select all of them and we need to have all of them happen right at the start so i'm going to put this right up front and only then we will have the rest of the elements uh, animated so that is what is the plan let us move these elements back again into their original position and let us see what happens when i go to slideshow so this is how the background scenario is coming in if you are okay with this you can leave it the way it is or if you want to introduce a little bit of delay also you can add a little bit of delay between the various elements and make them come one after another that is completely your choice so we have got these elements introduced into the scene the next thing we are going to do is to make one small correction and that is i see that when i go to slideshow you see that these elements are all popping out in all uneven shape so a good idea would be to actually go to shapes pick up the rectangle tool and then create some kind of a background in the front like this go to shape outline say no outline and give this a very dark uh, gray color and somewhere around this and then bring all the other elements to the front so i can select all of these elements and this and bring them to front the reason is when I go to slideshow, you can see that this is popping in behind this grass. So that is more like the way that we want it. So you can, can you see here? It is looking pretty nice here. So that is what uh, is the whole idea. So I introduced just this rectangular bit to cover the bottom portion of these uh, hills. Nice. The next thing I'm going to do is to introduce the balloon and the clouds. Once again, I can create these elements right inside PowerPoint but I am too lazy today. So I'm going to once again go to pixabay.com and let us download the balloon. When you search for balloon and search for vector image, you will find this option. So I downloaded it already. And uh, this is the balloon, right click copy. And then let us go to a new scene and I'm going to paste this over here because I don't want to spoil our beautiful scene which is already built. Maybe in, in fact, I can go to new slide and stick this in there because I don't want to spoil this one either. And uh, let us right click, go to convert to shape and then right click, go to group and say ungroup. So we have got this balloon first. Let us resize this so nicely, so tiny, teeny. Right click, cut this and then bring into the scenario there. Yeah, so that is nice. And let us take these cloud elements, right click, group, ungroup and then cut this 
and then bring this onto the scene like this. So we have got one of this and of course I need to remove that outline which is very ugly. And just to make sure that uh, some of the elements are behind and some are in front. So I'm going to right click and send this to back and bring this to front. Now we need to have this element also pop in just the way that this one pops in. So I'm going to use this animation. Use the animation painter and click on it so you can see that this is introduced into the scene. Now I don't want this to be the last one so I'm going to select the elements and then have this right after this partial circles. Now if I go to the partial circle there is zero delay here. So I can add a little bit of delay to this one maybe 0.25 seconds. So after the mountain range gets animated we will have this one popping in. All right. So when I go to slideshow, you can see that this is how the various elements are popping in pretty nicely. Beautiful. So now we want this to leave the scene to make this whole thing look pretty nice. So let us have that happen. How do we do that? Let us go to add animation, fly out animation, fly out to the right. And this happens for eight seconds and hit enter. And this happens after previous. So whatever is the last animation, after that, it starts moving to the right. Okay, when I go to slideshow, so the various elements are introduced into the scene and you can see that this has started pretty beautifully moving into the scene. Neat. Now, there is one thought I had, maybe instead of having this as after previous, maybe what if I can introduce this as with previous, but with a delay of maybe around 0.75 seconds and let us see what happens. So you can see that the various elements are coming in and this is moving out pretty beautifully. It is in front of this, but behind this, the scene looks pretty beautiful. Now we are going to add some birds flying from the opposite side. For that, I went to this Giphy or Jiffy, whatever you want to call this, Giphy.com. And then I searched for transparent bird and I found these ones. And these are pretty neat ones. So I just went here, copied the image came here and pasted this and here we have the birds and uh, this is a gif image or gif image let us keep this to the right and we are going to have this move outside to the left side so let us add animation say fly out and this needs to fly out to the left and this also happens with eight seconds duration this happens with previous and like the way that we did earlier, we will have a delay of 0.75 seconds. So while this moves in, this moves from this side to this side. Let us go to slideshow. Oh, wow. This is beautiful, isn't it? So this is how we have the whole animation happening. It looks pretty decent. Only this needs to be a little darker so it is visible. So I'm going to make this a little darker. And everything is picture perfect. And this is exactly how I want. If I want the whole thing to start only on a click, I can go all the way up and we can always start this on a click. So all that the audience sees is just the background. On a click, we have the various elements coming in and we have this animated scene happening. So that is how you build a beautiful animated scene in PowerPoint. If you are interested in learning how to create animated illustrations, then I've already created another video called How I Created Animated Video in PowerPoint, which is quite popular. It has got already 1.8 million views. So I will leave a link to that right now on your screen. You can click on that link and you can watch that video next. And if you want to join our five day free email course where I share 25 creative PowerPoint ideas, then you can click on the link here and you will get 25 ideas that you can use in your next presentation and these ideas I have not shared anywhere else. So click on the link right now, join our course and I will see you inside the course.